on itself. That river used to run... Where is here? I'm not quite sure what... I said, where's here, you idiot? Where are we? Well, let's get that word idiot squared away. I know where I am. You don't. If you care to repeat that question without being insulting... Look, you... I've got six bullets left in this. Now, that means I can insult you when I choose, or I can kill you if I choose, or both. Is that clear? And how are you going to find out where you are? <laughs> it's correct, Mr. Shannon. We'll strike out the word idiot. Where are we? Northwest corner of Wyoming. That hazy blue line over there is the Grand Tetons. How far to the Idaho line? A hundred. Maybe 120 miles, I'm not sure. Lost lots of blood. Shotgun, wasn't it? About. I want to know exactly how far it is. Don't you know? You say you're a scout. Well, I don't. I got some charts in the saddlebags. Let me put my hands down for a minute. No, you keep your hands right where they are, Mr. Shannon. I'll get the charts myself. I'll get the charts, Mr. Chet. And don't turn around. And on the other side. Take your hands off that! Yes, it was a shotgun. Two blasts, in fact. Fortunately, from a fair distance. However, I've started bleeding again. Do you happen to have anything clean for bandages? My shirt. I'm not giving you the shirt off my back. Shannon, actually, you're, you're going to do anything I tell you to. However, you can keep your shirt. Looks of it, you've worn it an indefinite period. I was saving this for... Uh, very special occasion. We won't discuss that. Make some bandages. We're going to be traveling together for quite some time, Shannon. I find traveling alone rather dreary. Look, you're hurt bad. Maybe dying. We're not going to be together for any while at all. I'm bandaging you, and then I'm hightailing it back to the wagon train. Oh, no, no, not yet. You and I are going over the Wyoming border. We're going to Idaho, a little town called Ruby City, which is about 50 miles from Boise. And you're going to help me find it. We'll be there before the 20th of this month because I have an appointment on that day. I haven't. 
I plan to be back with a wagon train. Well, Shannon, you see, I have guns to uh, cancel your plan. And uh, please don't try any tricks on me, because I know them all. In fact, I invented a few myself. Uh, I'm Tom Tuesday. When I was riding through Calico about 40 miles back, they were just putting up a new poster on you. Well, it worked fast in Wyoming these days. What's the bounty? Still 5,000? Ten. Dead or alive? Ten. Ten thousand. Now, uh. oh, bandage my head first. Now, please. off as your mouth. And an unarmed horse that's running off with your precious carpet bag. That's why you shot him, wasn't it? What's in that fool thing, anyway? Get up. Go get your horse and lead him over to mine. Uh, but you've unhorsed yourself. I suppose we ride double. Well, it won't work. My horse wasn't meant to carry two riders. He'd break down in a day. So you'll have to figure something else out. Oh, I already have. You see, you're going to walk. You'll walk all the way to Ruby City, because I'm going to keep that appointment on the 20th. <laughs> Apparently, you've heard that I'm not a killer. Wanted posters don't say wanted for murder. But they're wrong, Mr. Shannon. I have killed. Don't make me do it again. Good night. I'm going to eat with my hands tied. Use your fingers like you usually do. This is how I'll sleep, too, huh? Keep you from falling out of bed. You sure do treat me good. Think of everything. I never get along without you so far. Well, I don't know. Aren't you glad we finally met? on you, four on my horse. I don't carry one in the chamber because it's not safe. Huh? You're a lousy cook. Even Wooster would gag on this. He's a train's lousy cook. That hole in your head got blood seeping through. You've probably still got a slug in there. It should come out. Our wagon master pretty handy at things like that. Why don't you come back to the train with me? All it'll cost you is your life. How you ever got the reputation of being smart beats me. Here you are eating stringy jackrabbit when you could be in Delmonico's in New York or in Paris or any place with the half million dollars you took from that bank. It's closer to a million. There were three of you, I heard. The other two got killed, so you've got a million dollars?
That's why you keep that carpet bag so close to you. That's why you killed your horse. It was running off with it. That's why you gotta kill me, too. Yeah, let me get away knowing what I do. Right there at the bend of the river is where we crossed last year. You couldn't float the train across there now. And where's Duke? Well, maybe he rode down into that hodgepodge to find a way through for us. Well, he knew we were coming this way. He'd come back to report. We don't even know if he got this far. Duke's horse was shod with bar shoes. The horse that was here had him on. Drove a lot of horses. That's no proof. Chris? That's Duke's. Well, you're in charge, Bill, till I get back. I'm going down there and see if I can find a way across. Maybe find a trace of Duke. I don't know if he's down there, what's happened to him. But we know one thing for sure, and in this country it's fatal. He's unarmed. <laughs> Walking another step. So you got no choice but to use that gun. I could probably find my way along. Get there faster, too. What are you doing now? I don't go for this gym cracky about dying with your boots on. If I'm gonna die, I'll die with my feet getting the last breath of good air. Wait a minute. Better not try to ride a green horse barefoot. that wound. This keeps up, you're gonna run out of shirts. Why did you come back? Because I'm a good guy, in spite of being a horse thief. <laughs> what are you talking about? You shot. New shoes, too. Must be somebody's pet who doesn't take to scouts or outlaws. We'll turn him loose as soon as we get back to the train. Train? I fell on my head. Why aren't you making any sense? I guess you're still a little woozy. I've noticed our situation's changed. Shoes on the other foot. Or on the other hand, so to speak. I got your rifle and that little two-eyed lady's gun, too. Mr. Tuesday, you've run clean out of tricks. This horse. Nope, I didn't touch a nickel of it. 
Check it if you want. I didn't even look in. Figure if I saw all those banknotes, I might grab them and take off to Ruby City by myself. Say hello to Stella. Stella. How dare you say her name? You. And what a oof, you. Where did you hear that? Where did you hear her name? From you. Before you came to. Kept saying it over and over. See the date you got on the 20th? The guy you're taking all that money to? Well, the wagon train should be south of here, about 80 miles. You're not taking me to any wagon train. up that way on the end of a rope. You're not capturing me. I'm going to be in Ruby City on the 20th, or I'm going to be dead. Let's go. Storm going up. Let's see if we can find a cave or something before this thing breaks. Looks like a gully washer. Started Indian village. Chief must have died recently. They got him burning on a funeral pyre. for him, right up here. Man can get hungry even in that great beyond. I'll go see. Wait. I might as well tell you, Ken. I'm almost completely blind. Since I took this buckshot in my temple, I seeing two of everything. I even saw two of you, Mr. Tyson. And after I fell off my horse with your help, I don't have double vision anymore. Hardly any vision at all. That's your hand? Yeah. You didn't even blink. I was hiding this knife when you had me prisoner. Just waiting for a chance to hide it in your back. I know. I let you keep it, Shannon, because I thought that sooner or later I'd have to ask you to use it on me. I am asking you to take this pellet out of my temple. You operate? Closest thing to an operation I ever did was taking a splinter out of Wooster's thumb. Even then, I almost took the thumb with it. We get back to the wagon train. Maybe Chris Hale can. How many times do I have to tell you something to get it through your thick skull? I'm not going back to your wagon train. I am going to Ruby City. You've got my guns. Now you can shoot me if you want to, but that's the only way to stop me because I'm going now. You're not only blind, you're out of your mind. You can't even find your horse, much less. 
All this raven for what? Get the blood money in that bag to some gal called Stella? Just who is she anyway? Some dance hall queen you got a fancy for? <laughs> been dead for 20 years. The authorities killed her. Do you know who they are? Well, they're your smug, self-righteous citizens. Your law abiders who go to church on Sunday to tell God how much they love him and then hate his children every other day of the week. They made me an outlaw on a Tuesday and provided me with a new name. That's my thief's name, Shannon. I'll tell you about that. Shahrazad used to tell the Sultan stories, hope of saving her neck. And I'll tell you my story, hope of saving my eyes. Thomas Lovegott Cabot. My father was a minister, the Reverend Joshua Cabot. I was a teacher. I taught Latin and Greek at Dayton College for five years. Stella was one of my pupils before she became my wife. You know what the name Stella means? It's my great-grandmother's name. It means star. She was all the stars and all the galaxies. All rolled into one tiny girl. And oh, God was in his heaven radiantly. Because she loved me, too. Has this ever happened to you? Yeah. Just building up a fire. Good. You can cauterize your knife before you take this thing out. I told you I'm not doing it. Shannon. I'm telling you this story to arouse your sympathy. Now, I am humbling myself, and I'm not a humble man. Neither am I a surgeon. You said the authorities killed her. What do you mean by that? It's a time of great joy for both of us, because she was going to have a baby. But something went wrong. There were complications she had some kind of fevers that wasted her. A local doctor said that some kind of surgery was necessary, a operation that was beyond his skill, and the nearest specialist was in Boston. Boston was 600 miles away. It meant I had to pay his fare from Boston to Ohio and back, plus his fee, plus nursing and medicine. But Five hundred dollars, a little more than five hundred would have done it. Do you know how much money a teacher in a small college makes? No. No, you wouldn't. No, it's hardly enough to support himself, let alone a wife, especially one who needs surgery. Well, I needed five hundred dollars to save her life, perhaps two lives. Because she'd already felt the baby story. So I went to our banker. Am I boring you, Shannon? It's a story about how a college professor becomes the most wanted outlaw in the country. Isn't exactly boring. If it's true. Why should I lie? Get me feeling sorry for you. So I'll take that slug out of your head. Well, if I'm lucky, you get to see again. Good enough to shoot me.
the bank. They turn you down? With arrogance and cold disdain. I beg. I asked in God's name for help, and I was told that God was not a stockholder of the bank. I killed that banker. There was a heavy iron paperweight on his desk, alongside a stack of new bills. So I crushed his skull with his own paperweight and put his money in my pocket and ran into the street. I knew I couldn't go home. I'd been seen. If I went home, I might involve Stella. So I hit. And I mailed the money to Stella. The postal authorities intercepted him. I never saw my wife again. She died giving birth to our child. Baby lived too, but I never saw her. I didn't want to. Then. She's getting married in Ruby City on the 20th. And I have her wedding gift here. I have never seen her in my life. I want to see her, Shannon. And my one chance is in your hand. Will you help me? Please. Kill you if I got it out or kill me. Get it out. I don't know what about. What are you muttering about? Shut up, I'm praying. It's a battered band. It's caught against the bone. Get it out. Get it out. See any better? I can't see anything now. I told you it wouldn't work. Maybe when we get back to the train. I don't know. I'm getting bushed. See if you can get some sleep. See how you are in the morning.
But you again, Tom? Throw down your gun, senor. I'm not armed. Star. And this is the horse thief we've been looking for, huh? Just a minute, mister. I want to see the sheriff. I want a trial. I know I can prove I didn't steal it. Look, look, I'm a scout for a wagon train. Why would I want to steal a horse? I got one of my own. And where is this caballo? Uh, following maybe some innocente to his residencia? Somebody stole him from me. Madre de Dios! These rustlers are now rustling from each other. Amigo, we have not the time to listen to your story. Later, we'll investigate. Now, if you tell the truth, we'll be sad. Muy triste. But first, we'll hang you, huh? Shirt sooner or later. You're a hard luck guy. Watch out, you're gonna drop dead before they get a chance to string you up. You oh, imbecile. Oh, you pod. Ungrateful imbecile, I got this because I had a ridiculous impulse to come back and help you anyway. So go on to your manger wagon train. I'm sick of you. Not exactly crazy about you. If I cheat, let me believe you were blind last night, and then you slip out on me, and I get picked up as a horse thief. I left because I could see perfectly. And you told me that you had a job you had to do that was so important. Well, I had a job that took me in the other direction. So you go on to your job, and I'll forget about it. Think you can ride? No. All this trouble just because you want to give your daughter a dowry stained with blood. No dowry, Duke. No blood either. A million dollars in that bag? <laughs> There's not a dime in that bag. Seems the bank spirited away all the money before I had a chance to get to it. Well, then what is in it? You are curious, aren't you? Well, why don't you just open it? See for yourself. That wedding dress and the veil and other things belonged to my Stella. She wore them when she married me. I wanted my daughter to have them. She died. You see, that's why I had to be in Ruby City on the 20th. Well, it was a stupid, sentimental idea to begin with. You deserve to succeed. What are you doing there, Duke? 
Planning to build me a funeral pyre like the Indians have? I'm no great chief, you know. Yes, I am worth quite a bit of money, even dead. Shut up and save your breath. You might not have much left. You should be back with the train. I should leave you here to die. I'm an imbecile, like you said. So we're going to Ruby City. Just beyond those hills. Must be from the silver mines in Ruby City. You should be seeing her pretty soon. What day is it? 20th. We made it. It's a Tuesday. Could mean good luck. How's that old jingle go? Tuesday's child is full of grace. You must be she's Stella's child. How do you feel? Have you seen the trail I've been leaving? Can you sit my horse? I'll lead. Look, I could sit up in this. Look, we've come all this way for one reason. So you could see her. Duke. Duke, I can see her. I can still see her if you'll take this to her. Will you do that? Will you give her that wedding dress and the other things? And tell her that they belong to her mother? Where do I say I got them? Well, you might as well just tell her the truth. Say they're from her father. Her father is uh, indisposed and uh, detained, uh, too concerned with making preparations to meet his maker, to be able to meet his own daughter. No, but tell her that. Just say that I'm unable to make the trip to Ruby City, and that'll be the truth, won't it? And uh, give her my dearest love. You just said you were going to see her. I will see her, Duke, through your eyes. Your good, clean, decent eyes. You better hurry back, because I think the sun and I are going to sit hand in hand tonight. Back as soon as I can. You wait for me here. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, dude. Mercy, aren't you? All I ask is the merciful gift of breath. A few minutes more. Sends them both to you with all her love. It was the most beautiful wedding I ever did see. And she was the most beautiful bride. She wore the gown and the veil. It was as if they'd, they'd been waiting to be worn by her. 
It looked like the whole town was there. And they all love her. I heard him talking about her. He's a fine guy, too, the fellow she married. He's a doctor, young, and in love. Wow, I wish you could have seen him look at her. He couldn't hardly take his eyes off her. Neither could I, matter of fact. How the likes of you ever had such a daughter beats me. <laughs> Golden hair, like honey, spun with sunbeams. Eyes, like, like mountain violets after a rain. And that wedding gown wasn't a bit softer than her skin. It's my Stella. I'm talking about your daughter. Stella. I suppose she did look like her. We made it after all, didn't we? Thank you, Duke. Thank you, my friend in my eyes. Sundown. Made that too. I, I never thought I'd have flowers on my grave. Would you mind, Duke? Take this to dream on. Fancy meeting you here. Where you been? Train's been moving on his belly waiting to find out what happened to you. Who you got under here? I lied to him. I lied to a dying man. I lied because he was dying and because he was my friend and I couldn't tell him the truth. Lied to who? She wasn't beautiful. She wasn't even good. She'd grown up in that place. Didn't know any other life but in that saloon. That's where she was married, to a pharaoh dealer, by a justice of the peace who wasn't too sober. How could I tell him that? Tell who? I bought that bouquet. I picked up the wedding cake in a cafe, brought him a piece. Well, take it easy, Duke. Probably had to do whatever you did. She just shrugged when I offered her Stella's wedding dress. Old-fashioned and dowdy, she said. Give it back to Tom. She knew him. And about the bounty on his head. How could I tell him any of that? Bounty? On whose head? He was born Thomas Lovegod Cabot. They murdered him for the first time on a Tuesday. He named himself after the day of his death. Tom Tuesday. That's him. Well, you just buried a fortune. I buried a friend. And he's gonna be allowed to stay there and dream. Dream about a daughter who never was.